our spotlight today. Between inflation and the ever-increasing opportunities to add a gratuity on even the smallest purchases, like a cup of coffee, tipping fatigue is hitting American consumers hard. And with the holiday tipping season at its height, the question isn't just whether to tip or not, it's also who do you tip and how much? New data from payroll provider Gusto shows that as of November, service sector workers in non-restaurant jobs made up 7%, or they made 7% less tips this year compared to last year. So we want to bring back our panel. We have our panel, Mike, Heidi, Sarah, and Elsie to weigh in on this. This is a touchy subject, so um, I don't want to put you guys on the spot, but Heidi, I want to start with you. What are your, what are your thoughts on the holiday season? Obviously, people tip more during the holidays, especially uh, for workers who depend on this in order to uh, have enough income. Uh, what are your thoughts in general? Well, I, you know, we have created a whole wage system that basically presupposes that tips are part of wages and therefore people get less and there's less minimum wage. But I think part of the problem is every time you turn around, people are asking, for a tip. Whether you go to a retail store, you're asked if you want to give a tip if you buy a pack of gum. And I think people are like, I've had it. That in combination with inflation and people feeling the pinch and feeling like employers ought to pay their employees and that they shouldn't be dependent on tips has created this. Now, I would, anyone who's listening, that's not the employee's fault. That's not these workers' fault. We need retail workers. We need restaurant workers reward them, especially during the holiday season. Tip 20, 25% if you can afford it. Well, you have the workers who are standing in front of you who are turning the iPad or the tablet in front of you to decide what to tip. Elsie, what about the invisible workers? Usually these are women. Uh, there are people who, for example, maybe clean your hotel room. You don't often see them. They're less visible than perhaps the parking val uh, valet or the bellhop. What about them when, when we're talking about this whole tipping fatigue? Well, Heidi is exactly right. It begins with just the payroll and pay wages and gap in gender and gap in race and gap. I mean, the social, the the the, the social uh, uh, dynamics of this. We can spend three hours on as to why people are in this position looking for tips. But at the end of the day, this is my rule: if you're standing in front of me the entire time, you don't get a tip. If you move a little bit. Like you got to go get something, you got to deliver something, you're doing my hair, you're doing my lawn, you're moving. I'm interested in tipping. But if you're just standing there and flipping an iPad in my face, no, I'm not tipping you. And of course, a lot of this started in the pandemic, right? We were tipping before the pandemic, but during the pandemic really ramped up because you had a lot of these people who were still working despite people being at home, quarantined. Um, you had these workers still going there, making sure we were getting the services that we needed and making sure we were getting groceries and things like that. So Sarah, what are your thoughts on this whole tipping fatigue that people are feeling and the fact that the workers rely on this, but are people justified in feeling a little bit of, you know, fatigue here? Well, I live outside Washington, D.C., and I'll tell you what's happened here is this weird transition we're in. They passed a law which said that basically everyone's wages need to not include tips. So you have to pay the minimum wage regardless of whether they'll still make some in tips. And so you'll see at the bottom of restaurants, a 20% gratuity has already been added, things like that. And so when you see that and your meal is already 20% more, but then they're still asking for additional tip. It's like, well, wait a second, what am I doing? My food is already incredibly expensive at this point. It's causing restaurants to shut down around DC. And I think if we just had sort of a switch we could flip, everyone's now getting paid without considering tips. And then we go back to tipping being an actual gratuity, not an expected part of their income. That would be better for everyone. Yeah, it's interesting. I was reading an article where someone was saying how tipping used to be for people who went above and beyond, right? You felt special. They did right. something extra for you. But now it feels like it's mandatory no matter where you go. And Mike, you know, we've seen this ramp up again, as I said, during the pandemic, you've seen the, the cups, even the cups right there at the checkout counter. We're seeing more and more of them. Do you think it's gotten out of hand? 
Faith, I love where you're going with this because this is where I'm thinking about how we address this conversation. Uh, yes, there is a gap of, of wage gap versus what people are actually bringing home, but really what happened was, as you brilliantly pointed out, this happened as a result in response to the pandemic when emergency workers had to go in, uh, essential workers had to go in and provide services uh, in retail that we needed to use. And so as a way to compensate and to be in gratitude and to say thank you, these new point of sales terminals have been added in order to make the ease of tipping easy in order to express our gratitude. Now that we've come out of that dynamic of such, we still haven't been able to break away um, from the consumer behavior patterns of being in gratitude during the, the pandemic to where we actually are in the space of over tipping and making it ease. And so I think that is where we have to begin to have the conversation if we want to undo the fatigue in order to justify the tips for those who are going above and beyond so that we don't eliminate the pressure of our elected officials to really focus on the economic uh, gap way, economic uh, gap. Yeah, and I think part of the fatigue also comes from the fact that the percentages have also increased, right? We went from 15 to 20 percent. Now, sometimes it's 20 to 30 percent. And, which is really interesting. So, of course, this that's is a conversation that's happening. And, and Faith, it's the psychology of the idea, too, because the, the representatives in front of you, and they flip their terminal around, and so there's this psychological dynamic of, if I don't tip, do I seem rude or inhumane? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.